Hi everyone, in this video we're going to talk about graphing exponential functions. So graphing exponential functions. So an exponential function is a function where the variable is in the exponent. So all exponential functions look like this, f of x equals b to the x. And b here is called the base. So b is the base. So some examples of exponential functions might be things like f of x equals 2 to the x. Here the base is 2. Or f of x equals 3 to the x. Here the base is 3. Sometimes we look at a very special exponential function where we use a base called e. So e is approximately 2.7. It's an irrational number, so the digits go on forever and there's no pattern. So all of these are exponential functions. So the variable is in the exponent. That's why they're called exponential functions. We're mainly looking at cases where b is bigger than 1. When b is bigger than 1, all of the exponential functions look pretty much the same. So here's the x-axis, here's the y-axis, and all of these exponential functions have a horizontal asymptote. That's an infinite dotted line at y equals 0. They all have that right at 0, and they all pretty much look like this. They all pass through the y-axis at the point 0, 1. So what's the difference between these ex exponential functions? Well, it's the base. So basically, the bigger the base, the faster it grows. So I use a different color here. So for example, this red exponential function that I'm drawing has a bigger base than this green exponential function. So the bigger the base, the faster it grows. For our purposes though, all we care about is the general shape. So as long as the base is bigger than one, they're all increasing functions. If the base, just for fun, if the base is between zero and one, we won't be seeing this too much, you still have the horizontal asymptote except this time the exponential function's actually decreasing. Okay, we won't be messing with these uh, for the most part. Here, all of our bases will be bigger than one. Okay, let's go ahead and do a couple simple examples of graphing exponential functions. So ex means example, so ex. Let's do a couple, couple simple ones, a sketch. So part a, let's graph f of x equals 2 to the x plus 3. So this is an exponential function. The base is 2, okay? And we're adding 3 to the actual function. So that means we're shifting the entire function up by 3. If it was something like this, 2 to the x minus 3, it would be down 3. Whenever you add a number to the x, it's backwards, right? You think it's right, but no, no, it's left 3. And if you subtract a number from the x, it's backwards, it's right 3. In this case, we're adding a number to the entire function, so we're going to go up 3. So the function 2 to the x has a horizontal asymptote at 0, and it looks like this. And it always passes through the point 0, 1. So when we add 3 to this function, what happens is we shift the entire thing up by 3. So when we do that, I'll draw it again. There's the y-axis, there's the x-axis, so x, y. This horizontal asymptote, this infinite red dotted line, is going to go up to 3, because normally it's at 0. It's always at 0. So when you go up 3, it's going to go up to 1, 2, 3. And there is our beautiful horizontal asymptote. And this point here, it's at 0, 1. So if you add 3 to that, it's going to go to 0, 4, right, 0, 4. So that's 1 higher, that would be 4, and then it looks like that. And that would be the answer. This is the answer. This is the graph of f of x. You just take 2 to the x, and you shift the entire thing up by 3. So you move the horizontal asymptote, and you move the actual graph as well. Let's do one more. B. What if we had g of x equals e to the x 
e to the x um, minus 1. Okay, e to the x minus 1. So in this case, we're taking the graph of e to the x, and when you subtract 1 from the x, you think it's left, but no, no, it's backwards. We're going right 1. So first I'll graph e to the x. It looks just like the other ones. It's got a horizontal asymptote at 0, and it passes through the point 0, 1. So we're taking this graph and we're going right one, right? We're going right one. So I'll draw it over here. Here's the y-axis, here's the x-axis. So when you go right one, it's not going to affect your horizontal asymptote. You have an infinite horizontal line. So if you shift it to the right by one, you'll still have an infinite horizontal line. What's going to happen though is this point is going to shift, right? Because this green line is being shifted to the right. So I'll go ahead and draw it again. And the only difference is that this is not going to be 0, 1. This is the y-intercept. So if you wanted to do a better graph here to identify what this is, you could. To find the y-intercept, you always plug in 0 to your function. So if you plug in 0 into g, g of 0, you get e to the 0 minus 1. So you get e to the minus 1. And what is that? Well, it's a number. Um, you can write it, if you like, as 1 over e. Right? You can bring it downstairs and the exponent becomes positive. So this point here, the y-intercept is 0, 1 over e. And that's a number. I don't have my calculator with me, but you could put this in your calculator and you would get a decimal. So whenever it goes left or right, it's not very interesting. The only real thing that changes is the y-intercept. And all of the points change, right? The whole thing is shifted, but the asymptote itself uh, is preserved. So I hope that made sense.